would you just explain what the singularity is and explain what it is that is uh, how how machine intelligence is going to overtake human intelligence? Well, it's not one soundbite, but the underlying theme is what I call the law of accelerating returns, which is the exponential growth of the price performance and capacity of information technology. And that's not intuitive, because if you ever wonder why do I have a brain, it's to predict the future, so we can anticipate the consequences of our actions and inaction. So uh, I'd be tracking that animal, oh, okay, that animal's going that way, I'm coming up the road this way, we're gonna meet at that rock, that's not a good idea, I'm gonna go another way. So that was good for survival, that became hardwired in our brains. We didn't expect that animal to speed up as it went. We made a linear extrapolation of the future. And that works well for the kinds of challenges we had a thousand years ago. Information technology progresses exponentially, and it's not intuitive. Uh, so a linear progression goes one, two, three, an exponential progression goes one, two, four. It doesn't sound that different. Except when you get to step 30, the linear uh, projection, that's our intuition about the future is at 30. The exponential one is at a billion. And that's not an idle speculation about the future. I mean, this uh, is several billion times more powerful per dollar than the computer I used when I was a student, and we'll do it again in 25 years. And the principal difference between myself and my critics is they're using their linear intuition about the future. I mean, Kevin Kelly in the movie Transcend Man says, well, I don't see the harbingers of what Kurzweil is talking about. We see the same reality today, depends whether you apply a linear or, or exponential uh, projection about the future. And this has been going on for a long time. Uh, this exponential projection as applied to computation goes back to the 1890 American census. And I had that curve in 81, I projected it out to 2050, we're now at 2013, we're exact, 2014, exactly where we should be. Uh, in terms of the projection I made over 30 years ago. And it's not just these gadgets we carry around. It applies now to biology. Health and medicine is now an information technology. Not just using computers to track the data, but we're literally reprogramming this outdated software, and, that, and that's project, progressing at an exponential pace. Uh, so I, I make the case that both the hardware and the software of human-level intelligence will be in place by 2029. And uh, you know, the intelligence you see in Samantha uh, will be feasible by 2029. And I've been consistent on that date, and my own expectation and that of AI experts have been getting closer together, but it's not because I'm changing my view. Let me just stop you there. What, what does it mean to say that that, the, the human inte that, that intelligence will be in place by 20, 2029? I, I mean, explain, that means that, 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 that computers, that machines will have all of the billions of um, well, it all, means all, that all of the billions of computations that the human brain can make. Well, uh, the best definition uh, was uh, articulated by Alan Turing in 1950 when he designated his eponymous test, the Turing test, that basically if a computer is indistinguishable from a human based on language, in fact the Turing test is just actually uh, written text messages back and forth, and if, if you can't tell the difference between the AI and a human foil, then we say the AI has passed the Turing test. And no computer has done that yet, although they're getting better every year. Um, and it's, uh, there's actually a growing group of people that think I'm too conservative in 2029. If you were to take uh, Watson and apply it to a Turing test, it probably would do pretty well. Uh, but I'm maintaining my 2029 projection.